but I get, I'm going to estimate 30 to 50 things a week on average people going, Hey, did you know this? There's a lot of crazy. I <laughs> so, mean, like off the charts, crazy. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're here with the spy guy. Uh, you know who the spy guy is. If you don't, you uh, you should check out YouTube because he's all over it. You know, so what you have to do, I filmed many stories um, based off of things that people told me and that I've that never seen the light of day because something didn't feel right about it. Um, I've also filmed some stories with people that I trusted that should know that later I found out that what they told me on camera is not true. That, and I will give you an example and I won't call any names, but this person uh, is a, uh, uh, a family member of Elvis that told me all kinds of stories. Um, and the stories that this person told me do not line up with the stories that they wrote in their book. <laughs> so I think that they may not remember what they wrote in their book and they're making up stuff. I coined the phrase MBE and uh, what MBE is, is there's a term called Munchausen. Munchausen is when a person, and it's, it's a, a psychological disorder where a person with Munchausen will pretend that they're sick for attention or money. Munchausen by proxy is a person that pretends like someone else is sick, like a child is sick for money or for attention. Munchausen by Elvis, MBE, is someone that pretends like they knew Elvis or were more in the story than they really were for attention or money. And there's multiple examples of this. One of them is an elderly lady and when i say elderly she's she's in her 90s I'm not going to say a name but if any of y'all know anything about the elvis story you'll know who i'm talking about she claims that she was with elvis the last six months of his life basically almost daily like she was sleeping upstairs staying at graceland taking care of him doing that kind of stuff not as a girlfriend but in another capacity um and that's simply not true now, I filmed with this person because I wanted to have a first-hand account of what they're saying. And we know that this didn't happen because of a couple of different reasons. One reason would be, uh, I know uh, Dean Nicopolis personally. Dean Nicopolis was there. Dean Nicopolis did stay upstairs and stay in Lisa Marie's bedroom and did stay in Elvis's bedroom and did, he was on 12-hour shifts or 24-hour shifts and he was literally there in the bedroom with Elvis, in Lisa Marie's bedroom, they would watch TV, eat supper, where they hung out together. Um, Elvis thought of Dean as a son. And so Dean would know this person if she was there for the last six months. Right. Even if Elvis was talking on the phone, he would have been there and heard a conversation right. or something. And there was an appearance where this person was at a, a big appearance with a lot of other Elvis people. Um, and Dean and Sam, Thompson, Linda Thompson's brother that was a bodyguard, and several of them said, who is, who is this lady? I don't know who she is. If she was there, they would have known who she was. And Dr. Nick said that she wasn't there. So uh, that's just an example. There's so much of that kind of stuff out there. It's hard yeah. to weed, it is hard to weed through it, but you have to, you have to know your stuff. You have right. to know your stories. You have to trust certain sources. Um, and you have to, to use common sense. I mean, there's some things that just yeah. don't add up. They just right. don't. And I believe that, uh, the lady that I was talking about, the 90 year old woman that's telling these stories, I think she believes it. She's told those stories for so she's told them for 40 years now yeah. that I think she told them so long that she literally believes that it happened. Right. Um, Another example, there was a guy that I just did a video with that told a story in Tupelo Hardware about Johnny Cash. Um, his mother's best friend was Johnny Cash's um, a secretary. So he had an end with Johnny Cash, you know, and he said that what happened was 
Johnny was going to be playing, uh, I think it was Mississippi State where he went to school, and Johnny was playing at Mississippi State. So he had gotten his mother to call the secretary and say, we, my son wants to go, and um, can, can you provide us with tickets, that kind of stuff. He said later that day, there was a knock at the door, and they opened the door, and it was Johnny Cash. And he not, came to their, their, he lived in a frat house, and he said Johnny came to his frat house and walked in and said, hey, is such and such here? And he said, he stood up and he said, my mom, you know, uh, uh, my secretary told me to bring you this. And it was autographed. He still got the thing. And it's autographed, Johnny Cash, uh, to the fraternity, to his name and to the fraternity of this. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So he said that happened in 1950. Uh, I believe he said in the story, he said, he gave like September of 1957. It was something like that. So I started researching it. And he went on in the story to tell me that, that Johnny had gotten arrested the next, that basically that morning. So he played there that night, three o'clock in the morning, he got arrested in that town, right. which did happen. But it was May of 1955. It wasn't 1957. So see, even his recollection of it is can be off. So there's a lot of people that tell stories that their story's accurate. They just have the details wrong. It's by, um, accident, by accident. By accident. Yeah. It's not with intent. I mean, I believe that Johnny Cash really did go to this guy's dorm room. He has the photo to prove it. Right. And it actually says the the uh, the fraternity's name on the photograph, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. But he's going from memory, and he hadn't thought about Googling it. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's yeah. easy to Google. There's actually, in that town... There's literally now an historical marker <laughs> that Johnny Cash was arrested here in this town. <laughs> right. And they even have a marker. You could go to the hotel room he stayed in that he left drunk right. and walked and got arrested. That's a thing in that oh, town, man. which is really cool. I've got to go film that story. Right. And exactly. um, so I just love that kind of yeah. stuff. But that person, so there's another example of another layer. This person's not lying to me. Right. They just don't have their, their facts right as far as a simple detail. That's right. so uh, please get in touch with me. My email is billy at thesgnetwork.com. The S-G for spy guy, network.com.